All right, so this is uh, one of our physics labs uh, here at the University of Wyoming. Uh, in this lab, we grow semiconducting nanostructures, um, and we, we build devices and take uh, electrical and, and light-related measurements on those, on those structures. So I'll take you around and show you some of the different equipment here we have um, really for growing and also for taking the measurements. Um, so let's start here at this table. Um, this is one of our more heavily used furnaces. And uh, we use this for growing uh, mostly nano wires. Uh, what we do is we take these quartz tubes and we connect them to these, uh, these ports, which allow us to flow different gases through the tube while it gets hot. Um, and in the tube, we'll have uh, different, different um, uh, pieces of material. Sometimes we'll have a boat of powders, and the powders will evaporate and go through a reaction um, and will grow nanowires on the surface of, say, a gold film. Um, <clears throat> behind it is a larger furnace. Um, the larger furnace uh, can get a little bit hotter, but we don't usually use it for uh, any chemical processing, usually just for annealing in, in air or where situations where the oxygen doesn't matter so much. Um, so let's go around here. We'll take a look at some of the other equipment that um, it, you'll find uh, is pretty common in, in most other laboratories. Um, behind me is a CVD system, uh, chemical vapor deposition. Um, and that's basically the same as the furnace, except it has a computer control and the pressure can be um, uh, controlled more precisely. Um, our more, more uh, familiar devices or uh, familiar pieces of equipment might be the glove box, uh, which is just a box filled with argon and, and gloves. Um, this is one of our grad students, uh, Liu, and uh, our postdoc, uh, Dr. Dang Ying. Doing some work in, in solid state chemistry and uh, solid state physics for solar cells. <clears throat> uh, that noise you're hearing is uh, this box here is a, um, a sonicator. Uh, so, for instance, when we grow nanoparticles, sometimes the particles tend to stick together, and uh, we can use this box which basically just makes sound waves and busts them apart. Um, we also have the hood, um, a spin coder, which is this cylinder here which uh, spins chemicals onto a surface uh, very evenly. Uh, we do that for different film applications and also for, for uh, photolithography. Um, and then it's just some common things you'd find in any lab, uh, hot plates and uh, stir bars and things. Um, so let's, let's head on into this room. I'll show you some of the more unique equipment um, in our lab. So this little machine is, um, is an old thermal evaporator that we rebuilt. Uh, we use this mostly for uh, evaporating metals with low melting point, like gold, uh, aluminum, um, sometimes copper, but not so much copper, because copper tends to be bad for semiconductors. Um, behind me here is um, our E-beam uh, deposition system, which is an electron beam. So it uses a beam of electrons and, and evaporates metal under very high vacuum. Um, this will do just about anything. This will evaporate just about any metal, uh, regardless of its melting point. Um, this is the only one that we have on campus, so we're always getting asked um, about this about this system. We can, we can borrow time on it. Um, that noise you hear is the cryo pump, so it's a, a cryogenically controlled vacuum. Um, if we go this way, I'll show you uh, what we call a probe station. So, uh, for very small structures, sometimes uh, they're too small to use just a regular. Uh, alligator clips for, so we have these uh, micro probes under a microscope, so we're able to, um, to make electrical connections on, on very small things and apply a voltage and see how that thing reacts. Um, this is uh, some semiconductor analyzing equipment. Um, it's used both for the micro probe and also for our solar cell measurements. So this is part of our, our solar cell measuring equipment. We have an ultraviolet lamp um, where we can hook up a, a small solar cell, maybe the, maybe the size of a postage stamp, to two electrodes and uh, blast it with light and see if uh, we've made any, any good, good devices, any good solar cells with our, our nanowires or nanoparticles. And around on the other side, we have some more uh, solar cell equipment stuff. Uh, this is... Uh, this uh, monochromatter, it changes the wavelength of light coming from a, a, of a lamp 
and uh, it allows us to see what wavelength uh, the solar cell reacts most to, or, or at what wavelength is the solar cell um, operating at most efficiently. Um, that's hooked up to all this sensing equipment. It's kind of the brains of the of our equipment that we can run mostly from this computer here um, with, with special software that one of our postdocs uh, wrote. 